Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, coming off the long weekend. Um, Got to dig right in to today's Q&A. <clears throat> um, this actually came out of a discussion that we had yesterday on the uh, IFAST University call. And we started talking about carries and how each variation of a carry can emphasize a different aspect of propulsion if it is executed um, correctly. So we've got a lot of versatility in, in our carries. Um, we could use these in a rehab situation where we're reintroducing force production in somebody and we don't want to lose ranges of motion, but we want to teach them how to manage the internal pressures. Um, carries are a great way to, to reintroduce that. If we talk about jumping and change of direction activities in an athlete, we can use it there as well. Again, because of the, the pressure management that's, that's required under those circumstances, we can increase endurance at high force production. So this would be more like an element where we would be more associated with like strongman type activities. Um, and then we can uh, emphasize the recapturing of range of motion via the shape change that's associated with the load distribution of the carries. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize today. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So load matters in, in this situation because the amount of force production is going to be determined by the, by the loads used. So greater force production equals greater compression. And so the, the question mark then becomes is, are we trying to preserve or recapture ranges of motion? Or are we merely concerned um, with, with force production? Simple test. How hard is it for you to breathe as you're executing these activities? The greater the difficulty with breathing, the greater the compression. Therefore, you're moving closer and closer to a, a middle to, to max force production. Um, if we start to see compensatory strategies, so you start to see shoulders dropping or, or elevating in, in compensation for the load. Now you know you're, you're drifting into situations where you're using internal rotation compensatory strategies just to manage the load. So you get to decide whether that is, that is something that you're, you're concerned Concern with. Finally, you can look at um, monitoring your, your key performance indicators. So for instance, um, the chances of losing external rotation is greater at the higher loads or higher force productions. And so you have to decide whether whether that's something that, that you're willing to uh, compromise on. And so again, monitoring those. So if I had a, a baseball pitcher, for instance, that, that is very reliant on, on having access to external rotation, if I use too much force production in, in a carry, I may be compromising that external rotation. Um, again, load distribution influences the, cha the shape change. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about emphasizing different aspects uh, of propulsion. So if I'm writing a program and let's just say that my emphasis is on recapturing early propulsion capabilities and I'm doing carries that do not support early propulsion, then I've actually created interference for myself. So if I'm do doing too much force or I'm doing a carry that emphasizes middle when I'm trying to capture early, again, I have a conflict in my program. Now, I've talked about suitcase carries um, in, in the past. And so we're talking about the influence of a contralateral load here. But the thing I want you to, to recognize is that we've got the load outside of the base of support when we're talking about, about a suitcase carry. And so what, what we're doing is we're sticking that extremity that's carrying the load into middle propulsion, which means that we're going to increase the duration of the internal rotation moment on the, the opposite lower extremity. So we're increasing the duration of internal rotation. Um, and if we, if we view this from, from the top, we can actually see the center of gravity shifting over on the opposing side. So this is actually a carry um, with, with the, the right arm that you're, that you're looking at. If I take this load and I move it up into the rack position, so, so this would be you know, the kettlebell uh, being, being in a rack position, um, we're gonna emphasize a, a shift of the center of gravity as well as an expansion to compensate for the distribution of load. So now I'm gonna see the expansion moving posteriorly on the carry, the carry side. So what we have now is a delay. So we're moving from an E yard to an I yard Super, a, a superimposed I-yard position because the load is actually inside of the base of support and in the anterior. And so again, we're moving from ER to IR. So this is actually an emphasis on early propulsion. So if, I, if I'm biasing my programming towards early propulsion, I'm gonna emphasize a rack carry. The other alternative that we have for a unilateral carry would be a, a waiter's carry. So this is gonna be an overhead carry. Now, what we've done here 
is we move the center of gravity upward and it's still inside the base of support. So we're actually starting from a more IR representation moving towards ER. So what the waiters carry provides us is an advantage of emphasizing a later propulsive strategy. So, so we, have, we have each phase of propulsion and we have a unilateral carry that provides us an, a, an emphasis of shape change and load to help us remain coherent um, with our programming. So. Again, if we're, if we're writing programs, and let's just say we have a, a left foot jumper with low force production, what we might consider then is the right suitcase carry because we're gonna train more of a middle propulsive representation. This allows them to acquire the, the concentric orientation of, of the pelvic outlet that they're gonna need to produce force during a jump. I could use the exact same exercise with a different loading strategy for a pelvic floor patient that's having difficulty capturing concentric orientation of, of the pelvic outlet. So again, it's just a matter of looking at this from the perspective of what muscle orientation do I need? What representation of, of internal to, to external rotation am I looking at? And then just choosing the appropriate area of emphasis in, in the activity. So I can't emphasize enough the versatility of using, using loaded carries. It's just a matter of understanding the representations of which propulsive phase you're trying to emphasize and then manipulating loads and other parameters to remain coherent with your programming. If you would like to participate in a 15 minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, put 15 minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it and we'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Tuesday and I will see you tomorrow.